All right, so we're over here on the cart. Now I'm gonna let Richard talk about a lot of this, guys. Uh, he's more of my pressure washer pump guru and really familiar with a lot of this stuff. I know enough to be dangerous. Uh, Richard's fun with this a lot, lot longer than, than I have. But the basic components here, you've got your skid plate to mount everything on. We've got a shroud housing for safety reasons, right? Correct. We've got big pulley, little pulley. Right. Right, and uh, actually it would be this way. And am I right or am I backwards? Backwards. Big pulley gonna go on the pump, pump side. Okay, little pulley goes on the engine. engine side, right? And then we've got, this is an older broke belt, but we wanted to talk about these things together. So what is the point of having two pulley sizes? Well, th this particularly is set up, we, we gotta turn our pump at 1450 RPM. So your engine's running at 36, 34 to 36. The combination of these two pumps is going to turn that two pulleys is going to turn this pump at 1450 rpms hence the different size now what about a direct drive pressure washer it's doing the exact same thing on a well i'm sorry on a direct drive you're turning your pump at 34 to 3600 rpm whatever that shaft on that motor spinning the pump is straight on there and it's 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 the exactly. same exactly uh so guys in the industry have heard belt drive a lot i don't uh -huh. think they're as familiar with a gear drive right now that's where you were going a second ago gear drives accomplishing the same thing as a belt it certainly is basically just a transmission it, it's, small the gear it's the same difference as far as transferring the the ratios from the engine to the pump now why do we want to do that in the first place well <laughs> The pump, the pump's designed to draw water at that that RPM. Okay. Uh, we get the, it's the stroke difference between your four gallons and, and getting up into the larger gallon per minute pumps. The uh, the belt drives they they do offer some some benefits in longevity as far as uh, pump life. Uh, the heat and vibration transfer does come into play long term right right i don't think you're gonna i don't think you're gonna see a difference in lifespan between this and the gearbox if you maintain it properly kind of 50 cents half a dollar kind of thing right but with the belt you're not directly mating two metal parts together and getting all that heat exactly. coming over to the pump and there's a little bit of dampening going on with the, what the i like belt. about a gear drive on this application is the ease of access to check your oil all you need to do is check your oil look at it. it's got a sight glass on it if it's halfway of it you're good let's spin around and take a look at that there's a completed gearbox this is an eight gallon a minute unit here uh so here's our gearbox assembly and a lot of guys get confused because they just look at this at a glance and think this is basically a direct drive no 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 completely different beast you're getting away from the small direct drives where this is mated directly to the output shaft on the motor that's not what's going on here we've got a transmission a gearbox in the middle if we spun it around, you got your sight glass back here on the back side. So this is reducing RPMs to the pump, just like the belt drive is as well, which, like Richard said, is going to allow us to buffer feed off of a tank much easier. It's going to prime much easier at that low RPM range. Plus, we're running less RPMs on the pump overall, which means it's going to run a lot longer because we're not wearing the thing out as quickly. All right, let's go back to the cart. So we've got kind of a mock-up here and let you guys see. Um, let's look at this belt here. This is not the correct belt. You'll no. notice you got three notches on your two pulleys. Now this will work. So why in the world would a guy show up with this or, or emergency? Or you got one, you had a problem in the field and had a belt issue and your supplier, local supplier wasn't able to give you a three X belt and that's okay. In an emergency, if you, if you can only get three individual belts, but if you do, and you're going to leave it on there, Ask them to give you a match set. If you can't get to 3X, which would be basically be three belts made into one. One big wide belt is how yeah. it's going to come from the factory. Uh, so if you blow out the belt, it burns up, whatever, run to your local Napa. You can probably source the same number belt. It'll just be a single. Uh, try to get three. I have run one on two. I have run one on one. Uh, For a little while. But again, that is, that's is—that's kind of an in-the-field MacGyverism. All right. So if we look over here and we've got the motor shroud, your pump would be here right correct your engine would be sitting here mounted down mm -hmm. and what is all this stuff right here going the, on well the rails is actually what is going to mount your pump but in order to adjust that pump you got to have an apparatus and you're probably going to find something like this either under the pump or <laughs> maybe even under the frame to tension the belt uh, when tensioning the belt it's a really good idea to have a straight edge and make sure your your belts are staying in line as you tighten that 
some of them may pull to one side a little bit, cause you some issues. Just double check your your pulleys with a with a straight edge. And how tight do we need to get this? Man, about a quarter inch deflection on top of the belt is always a While good it's rule. running? <laughs> yeah, yeah, stick your finger in there. It'll be like that, no. So make sure your unit is cut off. You're not doing that. You can't do any of this stuff while it's running anyway, but no. that's just kind of for the dummies out there. So you'll need to break loose your, uh, your lock bolts right here. You're gonna have four in these slots that lock everything down. Maybe a little more aggravating on some, like he said, depending on right. the way they designed it. But you'll break those loose, which will allow this to slide. You'll tension it here with your tensioner. It'll be sitting in there kind of like that. And there's different ones out there, but once you get your tension locked down, you got a lock nut here as well, and then lock everything back down. Should be good to go. How how often should they have to do this? A guy that's running a full time truck. You know, if it's a brand new rig, he might want to get in there in in his first fifty hours and at least inspect it. I, I think belt drives are probably going to show most of the belt stretch in that first fifty hours. Uh, after that. Just uh, every time you change your oil, go ahead and pull the cover. It's just a few screws and just inspect your belt. You're looking for a lot of rubber buildup in there and you're also looking for the tension on it. If you see a lot of rubber buildup, you're probably wearing that belt down. So good info on a belt drive system, guys. Hope that makes sense. Tensioning a belt, just part of owning a belt drive pressure washer. It's not a big deal. Uh, gear drives are great as well. Either one of these is a good option. You can make a lot of money with a direct drive as well. So. Absolutely. All right, hope this video helped. See you in the next one.